So yeah, then then we move to the fish tank, extended fish tank studies where we we ask them. So rather than asking them to just tell us what you see, yes, open ended. Uh, in the, in this particular study, we showed them this fish tank scene, and then we asked them to identify certain things. Yes, by clicking on them. Right. So we, in other words, we yeah. highlighted. Using a perspective prime, we ask them to find something, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. by clicking on them. So we can see the heat map of where they click. So, for example, we said click on the red and green plant. Yes. Uh, one of the things we noticed in all of the descriptions of the original fish tank study was nobody mentioned the red and green plant. No. Not a single person mentioned the red and green plant. No. Every, almost everything else in the scene, yeah. statistically across the group, was mentioned, but not the red green plant for some it's reason. A very lonely plant. So we plant. knew that the red green plant was not something that people kind of normally saw. normally saw. Yep. So we wanted to just you know quick test. Hey, if if we if we ask people to find the red green plant, will they, they find, find it? it? Well, of course they yep. do, right? Because yep. they we've shifted their perspective to sort of ignore everything else and zero in and zero in. Mm -hmm. on the red green plant. Yeah. Right. Eighty two percent of people got yeah. the red green plant. That's right. Which, yeah. you know, zero had seen it before. Yeah. Until yeah. we had made it yeah. particular. And then they clicked on things like the filter, the fish's eyeball, and they all did that well in between eighty five and ninety two percent. That's right. But then remember the liver? Yeah, so we wanted to ask people so we, we kind of baselined it with the eyeball. Can mm -hmm. you can you Find the, a fish's eyeball, and mm -hmm. every you know everybody clicks on the uh, you know the, an eyeball pretty easily. It was the highest rate. The highest rate of all of them. Of everything we asked yeah. them to click, the eyeball was so easy to click on a, yeah. on a fish's eyeball. But then we asked them click on the fish's liver. Well, there is no visual representation of a fish's liver, but they were able, and and this is where we see that they're able to do part whole and perspective taking simultaneously, right? Yep. Because they basically took the fish, took it apart in their mind, identified where a fish liver would go, right? Yep. So the relationship between the liver and the fish's anatomy and and then clicked, right? Yep. And th and they're able to find something that li literally liverly literally <laughs> isn't in the uh it's isn't in visible. the picture. It's not visible in the picture. There is no yeah. fish liver in the picture. But they clicked on it with the same rate of the things that were actually visible. Yeah, which is amazing. Which is interesting. Yeah, really interesting. That they could suppose where it would be and with their mind's eye. With their mind, not their eyeballs, yeah. but visually, but with their mind's eye, they are able to take a perspective and find a, a distinct thing. Yes. In a part hood of fishness. So then we had one more thing for them, which is we asked them, listen to this, to click on the not fish, not vase, not castle, not plant. Like click on. As a meaning all of those, yeah. click on something that's other, none of that's those none things. of those things. And surprisingly, yeah. what we found was fewer than like 55% could click on something that wasn't those things. Yeah. Which is interesting because the thing that wasn't any of those things was the water. Yeah. Basically all they had to do was it's click like on like a, basically a space that was kind of not yeah. anything. Yeah. But they couldn't do it. Well, they did it to the to what degree? 55%. 55%. Yeah, down so. from like 85 and 90%. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is interesting because it, it it interacts with what we did in distinctions. Yeah. Not objects are tough. Um, then we wanted to test conceptual versus, I'm sorry, non-animate, non-eyeballed perspectives versus uh, anthropomorphic. Animate. Animate. Yeah. We sometimes call this conceptual versus anthropomorphic, but anthropomorphic is a big term that just means kind of human-centered. Yes. So things that are animate with eyeballs, you know, people have an easier time taking perspective mm -hmm. um, from things with eyeballs. Yeah. Imagining a perspective, imagining that a thing with eyeballs has perspective. They don't have an easier time taking that perspective, but they have an easier time imagining 
that something with eyeballs could have a perspective. Yes. And things with eyeballs tend to be more animate. Right? Yes. And so we asked them to describe the tank from both the perspective of the fish yeah. and also the from a, a, fin a financial perspective. Yeah. So a conceptual financial is yeah. a conceptual perspective. Right. Again, with their mind's eye looking at something, but in this case, not a liver, which is a tangible thing, yeah. but something a little less tangible, like financial, that has a lot of different yeah. components to it. Yeah. Well, and what we found statistically yeah. is that they took, what A, that when you give them a perspective, they can take it, yeah. the, the point. Yeah. But the things in the view that they saw based on changing the point, they changed. Yeah. The things that they saw changed when you yeah, changed the point absolutely. from which they were looking at it. Yeah, so when they look at the tank from the perspective of the fish, they see a whole different world mm -hmm. than when they look at the tank from the perspective, financial perspective. Right. So, wow, that's interesting. You know, yeah. wow, that's point view. Yeah. The other thing I think that's interesting here that might not be totally obvious is because because sometimes when you hear the way research is done, you go, no, duh. Like you yeah. ask them to find the red and green plant and they found the red and green plant. Like, why is that interesting? <laughs> when you give people a perspective to take, they're very good at it. Yep, that's right. If, if they're left to their own devices, they're very bad at it. Yes. They don't do it, mm -hmm. right? That's that's really remarkable, meaning there's this thing called perspective taking. It has these two variables, point and view. It's really, really important across for success in all domains of life. And humans are really good at it if you ask them to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't ask them to do it, there is a high probability they won't. Right, because you're <laughs> right. I mean, just like follow that logic. Wacky. It's uh, it's it 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 is like a it's like a uh, if you follow the breadcrumb of that logic, it's sort of pointing to if we bring perspective point view into awareness and into consciousness, make mm -hmm. people aware of how important it is, they'll do more of it and they'll actually get really good at it. Yeah, exactly. But if we don't, they won't. 